Auntie Yates, you're Ridley Scott's longtime costume designer dating back to Gladiator, but I understand you uh, discovered House of Gucci through his wife, Janina, and she had the story for over 20 years. So can you talk about uh, how, how we finally got to this movie? <laughs> well, it certainly did the rounds, this movie, because um, Janina would come on set and she'd be talking to Ridley about it and I'd go, don't forget me, don't forget me. <laughs> and then it would go away for a couple of years and then it would come back and go around maybe directors at Ridley Scott's company. And it even went to Wong Kar Wai. And uh, then it came back two years ago. Um, and I kept saying to Janina, don't forget about me. And uh, they very kindly allowed me to have a go at it. How familiar were you with this story? Because I feel like, uh, you know, or at least like in America, like everyone knows about uh, the Versace murder and not so much about Gucci. So how familiar were you with this? Because of the script, I was very familiar. I was, I think, probably the, you know, the only one in England who knew about it. And I think the whole of Italy knows about it. It is their journey, Versace. But because Johnny was murdered in Miami, you know, it was American news. But I don't think anyone in Europe knows about it, apart from every single Italian in the world. And me, now a lot more people will know about it. And I think it's great because it was really terribly shocking. And spoiler alert, she did do it. <laughs> it's it's historical people people can google and look it up uh, exactly. so where do you start uh with a project like this it's like so uh large and encompassing covers like uh three decades um and it involves fashion and you need like vintage clothing as well well basically i'd had a year because i was sent the script um two years ago and i actually thought it was going to happen and I happened to be in Rome. So I recruited all my Italian crew and I went off to the Gucci Museum in Florence, which is a complete wonderful resource that has films running on the wall of their workshops back in the forties of Gucci, Gucci and Madame Gucci and all the family history is all on the walls. It has things like tennis anoraks that Gucci designed. It has every single jewel, every single shoe, every single everything. It's wonderful. So I did that and I felt quite knowledgeable just after my time at the Gucci Museum. And then it went away. <laughs> so uh, I then picked it up in between our two lockdowns um, for research and development. I was actually employed for that one. Um, and my team in Italy were still happy to wait and join me, thank goodness, because it was quite big. But regarding the, um, the decades, as I was just um, mentioning earlier, both Ridley and myself, we knew the decades very well, because we'd lived them. And so we'd sort of look at each other and wink and go, yes, or no, or whatever. Um, so we've done that on, through two other movies, American Gangster was set in the 70s and All the Money in the World was also set in those periods. So we've had quite a bit of experience. Obviously this was a much more fashion oriented movie and it was over three decades. So that was a bit more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I read uh, an interview with you where you said like uh, Lady Gaga does not repeat a single look in this movie and when I was watching it I was like she, she really doesn't and there's a lot of outfits in this movie so uh, how many uh, costumes for her specifically were there? 54. 54, wow. Um, couple were things like jeans and jackets towards the end as you know um, so I didn't really necessarily count them but I had a fantastic cutter and his team who just made the most wonderful outfits I had access to archives had access to the Gucci archive and I went to Florence and uh, we looked at that 
and when then we sent it to LA, it fit LG like a glove, all of the archive, extraordinarily. Um, and then the costume houses in Rome also, three of them had wonderful archive as well. Plus LG opened up her archive, which was amazing. A lot of it not quite suitable, but um, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you can't wear like the meat dress with in the yeah, suit, exactly. so. <laughs> well she also uh she's she said that uh she wanted to look like her mom in this movie like not uh sort of kind of like I, I guess like elegant like Italian woman not what you think of as like kind of like pastiche like 80s like fashion exactly I I compiled a file because obviously I was researching the granny out of everything and I compiled a Joan Collins file for Ridley because we thought that would be it for Patrizia and he went no he didn't want to go that extreme he wanted a Gina Lola Brigida look and I was slightly nervous to mention this to LG but on our first Zoom with Ridley and Janina Scott um, she announced she wanted to look like her mother and that was just brilliant because that gave us a lot more area to play in in fact and she didn't even once mention the meat dress <laughs> well the the other one of the other character colorful characters in this movie is uh paolo played by jared leto and that he is, I guess, what everyone would call a scene stealer in this movie, and he dresses very colorfully and loudly. And then his his uh, he has his like, I guess, velvet purple suit. It's like belted. So, how did you go about designing his look? Well, I was very fortunate because um, I approached the Attalini brothers. They had they are tailors from Naples, and they are the most superb tailors in the world. They go and commission their own cashmere in Scotland. They have their own checks that they, you know, um, weave it to. They're just completely original. And they did all the costumes for all the tailoring for the great beauty, which was, to me, it was one of the best tailored films of that period. And uh, also I know that, knew that Jared knew his costume, knew his wardrobe. So um, when I, offered them up, as it were, <laughs> he was delighted. But we went down there and had so much fun picking the dandiest of the dandy checks, the dandiest of the dandy stripes that, you know, but we didn't get it all on screen, sadly. Mm -hmm. And the pink corduroy Norfolk jacket suit, I did, <laughs> that was my, from my mad brain. Uh, how many uh, did you make from scratch? Um, for all the main actors, everything. Everything. Um, except for, no, because I have, had access to, um, for LG, I had access to all these wonderful vintage um, archives. Tirelli had a huge, great room of costume um, from the 80s and the 70s. And Patrizia Reggiani did not wear Gucci, really, not that much. Um, and uh, she wore Yves Saint Laurent a lot of the time. So we had Yves Saint Laurent. I had rails and rails I had access to. So that was so fortunate. And two other costume houses as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a favorite look uh, in the movie? I know you haven't seen any yet, but of what you remember of uh, what you put everyone in, do you have a yeah. favorite look? <laughs> I do remember quite a lot of the movie. <laughs> Um, well, the bridal dress is my favorite because we created that from just literally scratch. And we also made the real bridal dress that she wore, um, from, which we took obviously from photographic reference. But um, the wow factor of the dress, because it had um, lace hand sewn onto it all over and the work that had gone into it was just it was you know six eight weeks of work for my cutter I loved that beyond belief and I thought she looked so beautiful in it mm. it's a great scene as well uh well Janty thank you so much for your time it was great speaking with you uh we'll see you back here in a little bit thank you thank you, thank you.